Good evening and welcome. Our cover story for tonight's edition of Fine Print is the biggest democratic election of this year. The United States will go to the polls to elect their next president this November. The Democratic Party is having the first ever virtual convention in Wisconsin. And for the fourth and final night of the 2020 Democratic National Convention, the former Vice President Joseph Biden Jr. will finally take the center stage to officially accept his party's nomination for president. The former Vice President will deliver arguably the most important address of his long political career. After two failed presidential bids in his career spanning over 36 years, the final leg of the convention will mark a major milestone for Biden. The Democratic presidential nominee will be speaking live from Chase Center in Wilmington, Delaware, and is expected to address the Trump administration's mismanagement of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and the nationwide protest against racism. The final night has been themed as America's promise, and some of Biden's former rival presidential candidates from the Democratic Party will also be making appearances. The list includes former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg and former Mayor of South Bend, Indiana, Pete Buttigieg. Now, according to reports, Biden's family members are likely to speak before he officially accepts the party nomination. And this comes two days after his wife, Jill Biden, delivered a speech on the second night of the convention. Like previous days, the fourth night of the Democratic National Convention is scheduled to begin at 9 p.m. Eastern Time and will last for two hours. Our viewers from India can catch the live broadcast at 6.30 a.m. Indian Standard Time on Thursday. The convention will stream live on the DNC's website and across all of their social media channels. We're on correspondence. Simon Marks joins us live from Washington, D.C. Good evening to you, Simon. Tonight, fourth and final night of the 2020 Democratic National Convention, and Joe Biden is taking center stage for what is possibly his most important speech yet. Oh, without question, Alison, this is going to be the speech of Joe Biden's political career so far. And as you know, it's a political career that stretches back here in Washington, Washington to the 1970s. But I've got to tell you, there has been breaking news here uh, this Thursday morning in Washington that is going to provide Joe Biden with a new opportunity in that speech to attack President Donald Trump. We have within the last hour learnt that Steve Bannon, once Donald Trump's right-hand man, in many ways the man who created Donald Trump's presidency by persuading the then property magnate in New York that he could actually run uh, for the White House and win the keys to the Oval Office. Steve Bannon has been arrested and is being uh, charged in New York uh, with one count of conspiracy uh, to commit fraud and one count of conspiracy to launder money. All of this relates to a crowdfunding online project aimed at raising 25 million dollars to build a wall along the u.s border with mexico prosecutors in new york now alleging that mr bannon and his uh, co-conspirators three other men charged today uh, diverted that money to pay off their own personal credit card debts and spent it on what's described as a lavish lifestyle including travel hotels and cars so donald trump's once right-hand man, the man who moved into the White House with Donald Trump, effectively acting as his de facto chief of staff, is now facing the prospect of a lengthy jail term if he is convicted of the two charges that he faces. And that is an extraordinary political gift from New York prosecutors to Joe Biden as he prepares to deliver that all-important speech on the fourth night of this all-virtual Democratic convention. And as much as that is a gift to Joe Biden, it is a monumental headache for President Donald Trump, who on this occasion is not going to be able to do what he's done in the past with people from his inner circle who have got into legal trouble. He will not be able to say of Steve Bannon, well, I hardly know the gentleman, because they were hand in glove for such a very long time. So a massive opportunity this for Joe Biden and the Democrats. Absolutely. This is, of course, very big break news and on the morning of uh, before his uh, big speech. And of course, we had Barack Obama last night supporting Joe Biden. 
but he started his speech as an example with a very strong criticism of Trump and his failure at uh, in presidency so far. Well, a a an absolutely unprecedented intervention by former President Barack Obama. I think, Alison, there will be those Democrats out there who wish that Barack Obama had done it earlier, uh, wish that he hadn't waited four years finally to give vent to what was very apparently uh, in that speech last night, the simmering anger and fury that he feels uh, over Donald Trump's occupancy of the White House and his uh, style of running the presidency. This was an evisceration of Donald Trump uh, and members of his inner circle, uh, his enablers and supporters, uh, as Barack Obama put it. Uh, former President Obama telling Democrats and the wider television audience uh, that the Donald Trump presidency was all about feathering uh, the Trump family's nest and the nests of those people in his inner circle. Again, uh, extraordinary given that just within hours we would be learning of the arrest uh, of Steve Bannon. But that speech was unprecedented. This was the first time a modern American president has attacked by name his successor. It pierces the tradition of uh, presidents uh, choosing uh, not to speak out and criticize their successors, uh, believing that there can only be one American president at a time, a tradition uh, that Barack Obama has largely honored over the last four years, uh, but absolutely abandoned and shredded just a few hours ago. And uh, going back to the breaking story, Steve Bannon, he was credited with building Trump's campaign around America first. And he especially focused on uh, the small towns of America, which ultimately ended up rallying around Trump. And these, of course, are the very people who are being extremely hard hit by the economic fallout, as an example, from COVID-19. Yes, absolutely. And in fact, uh, we heard Kamala Harris, uh, the vice presidential pick for the Democrats, making the point in her speech last night. And as you know, she biographically introduced herself uh, to those Americans that may not have been particular, particularly familiar with her own political record or personal background. But she then zeroed in on COVID-19, particularly making the point uh, that minority communities and underprivileged communities in the United States have been harder hit by by the virus than other communities. She said um, that uh, a vaccine uh, is not going to overcome uh, in and of itself uh, the fact that communities of color are being disproportionately impacted uh, by the consequences of COVID-19, not just from a public health perspective, but of course from an economic perspective. So you can expect Joe Biden, I think, to echo many of those cadences. And look, this arrest of Steve Bannon, accused with his co-conspirators of swindling hundreds of thousands of Americans out of money that they believed was going to be spent entirely on constructing a border wall between the United United States and Mexico will be seized upon by Democrats as a further example of the fact that while President Trump campaigned in 2016 and is campaigning again as being the candidate of the common man, in this case Steve Bannon, one of his principal uh, associates, is accused of swindling the common man out of millions of dollars. That's going to be a huge rhetorical problem for the White House. Simon, thank you very much for joining us as always.